starting to look. There you go, there you go. Keep ready. Yep. Go live? Go live. Push it. I'm going. I think we're live. Now we're live. There's a lot of liveness going on around here. Yeah, we got one, two, three, four, five, we got, six. We got a lot of now. high volume talkers in the background. Yeah. Adrian, you have a gun? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Are we live on Facebook? We are live. Beautiful. We are live. So it is Saturday, and we are. Tony? No. God damn it. Saturday is <laughs> the shot. Take two. Saturday is the shot. All right. We're going to start over. We got a uh, Brandon stunt doubles in today. So we're going to do this. Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Welcome to Saturday. At the shop. High five. Nice. nice. Big comeback. There nice. Nice. How's everybody doing this morning? It is Saturday at the shop, and we are Industrial Cigar Company right here in beautiful Frisco, Texas, mm -hmm. North Dallas. And uh, there's one obvious thing here. You're not Brandon. I am not Brandon. And why are you not Brandon? Because Brandon's AWOL. And so... I, I, isn't that, doesn't that make something like two weeks in a row? Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, um, but so I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm too. glad you're here too Step because sales and... have increased dramatically. Attitude has improved dramatically. Brandon, you know, as you know, is just a, he's a sour, bitter person. And nobody likes him. Well, as as his father, I'll let you say that. I, yeah. I haven't earned that right yet. Right. So, no, he's he. So to me, he's. I, I'm not bitter because he's left and taken my grandchildren with me, with him, and I haven't seen. Well, my I actually share a name with, with, by the way. That's right. My last name is Elias. Your grandson's name is Elias. That's, so that's right. That's perfect. That's right. So um, we have some cigars that we're going to light up. Mm -hmm. But today, on today's show, we got some bullet points. Let's party. I like where you're going with this. Right. There's something new going on in the humidor. Man, you are good. You're a lot better than Brandon. Thanks, man. And uh, win a date with a doctor. <laughs> win a date with a doctor. Okay, everyone likes that. Everybody likes that. Uh -huh. And and how slow can you smoke? Wow. How slow can you smoke? Are you a slow smoker? I tend to be a slow smoker uh, even when I'm not working. So like I so like I'll be sitting at home or you know smoking, and I'll be on YouTube uh, looking up or reading about my cigar that I'm smoking, and they tend to go out on me sometimes. Oh. <laughs> so like a tour will last me an hour and twenty minutes. Okay, which is, which is but that's I mean that's still that's getting through it a pretty good clip. I do uh, I do enjoy taking my time with cigars. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about who you are. Okay. Um, uh, you I'm are light up here. You're, go ahead and light up. Uh, tell us what you're what you're lighting up. I'm actually lighting up the new uh, Oyo Oyo de Nicaragua Antonio Connecticut. Um, just one half wheels, uh, number one cigar of the year in their consensus. Right. So right. So I'm not really a Connecticut type of guy. I love Nicaraguan tobacco. So when I learned about this one and it came in the shop, I was kind of excited to try it out. Um, you know, see what it, see what it is. I liked. Um, other Connecticut I liked is the, uh, which is actually not a Connecticut, is the My Father Havana Seed, uh -huh. CT, 2K, whatever. Right. Um, which is actually just a Habano grown in Connecticut. Um, I like that. But uh, yeah, I wanted to try this out, see how it is. Excellent, excellent. So before we get into uh, talking about Tony and Tony's background, we are uh, we're very honored to have Tony. He has uh, joined our company and uh, has added a lot to this, including uh, filling up the seat today. Um, hey, uh, we just uh, we did get our report just in. Uh, great news: we are coronavirus free. So oh, gotcha. uh, yeah, so yeah. big day, big day. We were worried. We saw a lot of people that they kind of staggered around a little bit. Uh -huh. and I thought maybe the illness had got them, and then I realized that they were walking away from a bottle, and, and yeah. it, it all Especially, came together. I think it was the third Wednesday of, of the month. Yeah, the uh, Bourbon Society, I thought and coronavirus I, had I spread like, dramatically. I was about to grab my towel and put it over my face. Yeah, and, yeah, that's that's good. So, hey, coronavirus free, mm -hmm. um, big day. And also, today is an extra day to smoke cigars because it is a leap day, mm -hmm. and, um, and we're really excited about the fact that you get to have that extra day. And we're going to, because it's actually not a day that exists in the universe, we're going to give you some special deals at the end of the show. So make Ooh, sure nice. that you watch this and uh, you do this. How's everybody doing this morning? Give us a shout out on IG. Share it. Facebook. Share, share it. Share it. Share it. We got the regulars in the shop back here. We got the, uh, the rooster crew. Um, and Chris, is Chris here? Where the hell is Chris? Oh, he's working. He's working. Oh. oh, good. Yeah, see, we, we have trained our customers well <laughs> and taught them how to use our cash register. So on Saturday morning, um, we have our customers ring up customers. So the amount of trust here is, is interesting. I mean, it's, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, just the amount of keys that we've given out to customers so that they can come in whenever they want. You know, speaking about the coronavirus, I read something this morning that apparently there was this thing going around the internet this week where the CDC is recommending those with beards shave. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so you don't catch the coronavirus. Huh. Turns out it's a hoax. Yeah. That's actually Go figure. Uh, an infographic for uh, how to wear a mask. So just FYI, keep nice. your beards. I'm not shaving mine. Hold on to your beard. I'm sure this coronavirus is a serious deal. I, I think they could have picked a better beer. But, um, <laughs> and, and I'm sure it is serious. I just do know that there has been exactly 0.0, .0 deaths of the coronavirus in the United States, which means zero in Frisco. Yeah. And 68,000 people have died so far this year with the flu, but we've not that our inability to cure the flu hasn't stopped the stop, didn't cause the stock market to drop, you know, to 2008 I honestly, levels. you know, not to get conspiracy theorists, but I kind of think it's all timing. There, there could you know, be some timing. I think, uh, yeah, we don't, no, we don't want to get too yeah, political. Yeah. I mean, we are talking about cigars yeah, today. We We're so talking we about got? a lot of things. So, so really, let's talk a little bit about um, you actually coming in and joining the company. Where did you come from? So my wife and I just moved two months ago from Los Angeles, California. Um, we Don't was, hold that against him. I mean, that no, was a I great know. move. I know. I'm originally from Florida, right? Then I went, you know, uh, west um, to pursue an acting career, which I did for, you know, for a long time. And uh, Anything we ever saw you in? Star Trek, 24, Ghost Whisperer. Seriously? Uh, yeah. How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking it was like some hemorrhoid commercial no, that you were going to show us. No, uh, you can just Google my name, and, and I was I was. Oh, we did. We did a full background check. Oh, you did a full background yeah. check. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, and then you know we had we wanted to start a family, and we had our son six months ago. And congratulations! And thank you very much. And and we, uh, my wife is originally from Chicago, so we're both transplants. So having a family and and then you know being alone out there is is kind of hard and. So we wanted our son to grow up with, with grandparents, and, and uh, my mother-in-law lives out here in Texas, so uh, we moved out here so my wife could be you know, with her mom. And, and so far, it's been two months, we love it. Uh, within a few weeks, I found this place and uh, you know, came in and joined the family, and it's been great. It's been so great. That, that, that's an important part of what we do, and, and we, we always tell everybody, welcome to the family when you become part of this. Have you felt welcome to, to the 100%. family? 100%. Awesome. I think it was my second day here, <laughs> And I was just still in the interview process. I met Andrew first, right? And then he had me come back in a couple of days later. We play, we throw Andrew. Andrew out there. Just said, if you come back after meeting Andrew, then it's good. that's a big step. All right, yeah, fair that's enough. a big step. Uh, but then, the, so then I met Brandon the next time. You know, a wall. Yeah, a wall. I, I met him. Yeah. And within five minutes of meeting him, you know, I'm I'm going with him, and he's giving a tour. Mm -hmm. And this is just my second interview. And he lets these these guests know he's like he's part of the family now. And that was, that was... That's awesome. That was cool. That made me feel really, really good, you know, and so... And, and just the, the hospitality I've, I've received from everyone here, first night, you know, about 10 or 12 people got up out of their seats, your members, oh, yeah? your guests. To, they, just because they didn't recognize me, I'm wearing a red polo shirt. They said, I don't know who you are, you're doing your thing, I wanted to introduce myself. That's something that you just do not experience in California. No, no. At all. Or, so or anywhere. I mean, that's just... Uh, we talk about the utility of smoking a cigar. You buy a cigar, if the lounge has chairs, you go through the utility of sitting through the chair, completing the action of smoking the cigar and leaving. Here, the cigar almost becomes secondary because of the relationships and everything that get built yeah. here. So for those of you that have not been here, man, book the next flight, get on down here. Um, sure. We have people that are coming in from all over the country to come visit us at ICC and we, we thank them for that. Mm -hmm. um, so well, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. The one thing that really impressed me, particularly when I um, met Tony and we were in the humidor, he has an extensive knowledge of tobacco. And, and we always say, hire good people, we can teach you tobacco. But in this case, we had somebody that is, is at, I mean, I don't want to say we're on a certain level, but most new hires, we have to pull them up. You know, with you, you have that knowledge. And when you started smelling cigars and calling, identifying which country of origin they were at, what uh, country of origin the cigars were coming from, some of the notes that you were picking up, which were just dead nuts on, you're, you're dealing with somebody that is has an unbelievable level of experience. And then I'm watching him in the humidor. Uh, guys that have a lot of knowledge have a tendency to let you know they have a lot of knowledge. And um, that if you're at an entry level point of getting into cigars, you want somebody that's gonna talk with you at a level that you're gonna understand and not just 
throw out a wrapper, binder, and filler, and send you on your way. So he can explain why certain blends are a certain way, and, and more importantly, what manufacturers are uh, using what types of tobaccos and how that benefits you. So come in and see Tony, and when you come in and see Tony today, he's going to give you a special deal on your cigars. Uh, he doesn't know what that is I don't yet, know what that so. is yet, but I'm excited. No, so we're good. Um, this uh, brings us to our next uh, guest, which is Adrian. And we had a, an utter failure with uh, with a lot of people last week, and they didn't come through with the uh, what they what we're going to call this segment. So we have stuck with the what you packing. I like that um, phase. I I was personally leaning towards you talking to me, but uh, <laughs> uh, or say hello to my little friend was was positive. So here's Adrian, cigars and guns. By the way, welcome uh, cigars and guns. We have tales from the lounge. Um, Tony was actually pretty impressed when he saw this plethora of uh, video devices up here and we're actually one short so we would have I mean, there's six seven, cameras here se and well six and we should have had seven if I had mine rolling but so Adrian's group uh, cigars and guns huge group if you're if you're not following them follow them um, it's it's just uh, two passions of Adrian's cigars and guns and he does some great photography with both and every once in a yep. while you accidentally leave your tequila in the shot so yeah uh, congratulations on that but he has been instrumental in us doing our events with brownell guns our friends up in iowa and uh so uh, with that we've started this um this area as you know it's texas so everybody's got a gun and uh so we're doing um and look at the guy from la Oh, hey, Jesus listen, Christ, is that I, thing I, I, bite? Yeah. No, I'm more worried about what my wife is thinking right now. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, she's from Chicago. Everybody has guns Everybody there. They're has just guns. not supposed to. Oh, um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, as always, these are unloaded, you know, safety first, obviously. So today we have the pig, uh, pig, SIG 938, P938. Um, let me take it out of the holster here. So we have usually Legion Concealment. We have yeah. some of our other friends. Josh is on. We right had uh, yep. uh, Vulcan uh, Machine Works, Machine Works yeah. last week. Jeremy. So um, guns, bourbon, scotch, whatever your adjunct uh, plaything is yeah. that ties to cigars, odds cars. are we're involved. And what was that? Cars. Cars. cars uh, that's sure. coming up. Yeah. But tell us yeah. a little bit about this gun and... Um, it is what a yeah so a nine mil nine thirty eight and nine millimeter. It's a nice little carry gun. It's a looks like a, like the nineteen eleven. Yeah, um, it does look like a small yeah, nineteen eleven. Really pretty rose grips on there, and you know you can see the embroidery here. Really nice laser engraving, but a great gun handles well. Um, and like I said, it's a nice little carry gun uh, to hold on to. But uh, yeah, that's what. That's what we're carrying today. Nice. I like the uh, the etching you have on the slide. Yeah. That's really pretty. Yeah, definitely really nice. That's beautiful. Beautiful. You know what would go good with that, Dave? Yeah, what a Broussard rosewood uh, uh, lighters. It would. A Broussard, a Broussard um, Havana Traveler with a gun holster in it. I need to have him make that. That would be awesome. Next time, you know. Idea we'll, logged. We're going to get that yeah. done. And then we yeah. can pair a cigar with each gun now. We, we can. Think and what that would you before, recommend but... smoking with that? Shoot. Um... That kind of has a dark wrapper on it, a little dark. <laughs> I, I would yeah. say what I'm smoking today, the Patoro Brazil Torpedo. That's a good one. This is a phenomenal cigar. Thanks, guys. Give us a follow. Industrial Cigars, Cigars and Guns, Tales from the Lounge. Take care, guys. Thank so, you, uh, coming to our second point, which was um, there's something going on in the humidor. Something new no going on. I mean, there seriously. is something new going on, and this is, you know, as you guys know, we went to our trade show um, right around the Super Bowl, and a lot of the product that we started to uh, pick up is, is happening. I'm also really proud to announce that we've added uh, Espinosa cigars to our assortment. The, the orders are submitted. They're on their way. Eric Espinosa is working as scheduled to come out here and spend some time with, with us to uh to talk to us about this incredible cigar line so we're very excited about that uh the addition of espinosa to our mix so welcome eric i know he's watching i have um, a little uh, note to add to that actually okay if i may no data so i just was checking out um i've never had espinosa i haven't had the pleasure yet so i'm looking forward to that but uh i think this just this past year at the trade show they introduced uh mtz mm -hmm. And it's, it has a special uh, collector's humidor, and Box, it has right. colorful windows on top. Right. So MTZ stands for Matanzas, Cuba. That's actually where my family's from. Oh, really? That's where my mother was born. 
So those humidors are really cool. And I remember my mom telling me about those really nice windows. So when I saw that humidor, uh, the collector's humidor with that, those glasses right. individually hand painted, I was like, man, I want to okay. be able to see. Okay, we'll get you one. Those would be cool. We ones. will get you one. Did you hear me, Eric? Because I ordered them, but they, they put them on back order. But oh, okay. We need to make that happen, Eric. All right, cool. So uh, excited to have Eric Espinosa in. Uh, and I'll tell you another little, uh, uh, little, another little bit of information that when I was talking to Willie Herrera at the uh, trade show last July, when you have Willie say, hey, man, you need to be selling Espinosa. And Willie Herrera is the master blender for Drew Estates. And he was like, you need to be selling for, uh, for my friend uh, Eric Espinosa. So... Uh, Espinosa will be in the house, and we know that that has a number of our members extremely happy. A lot of new things came in this week. Um, let's let's kind of share going back and forth a couple of a couple of old standbys that we've uh, expanded the assortment on. Uh, number one is Opus X. Lost City is back in the house, as you know. Back in 2005, Andy Garcia did a movie called The Lost City. They got down to the Dominican, and the crops were out of the field. So they actually grew a, a, an entire field of crops so that they could shoot the movie. And the tobacco that was from that crop is slowly trickled out into small limited edition cigars um, with the Opus X Lost City. We have them in multiple sizes um, and, and it's a, a beautiful cigar. Uh, one of the cigars that we have from Crown Heads, the La Coliacion, one of my absolute favorite cigars with coffee. It's the perfect pairing. And uh, they just came out with this gordito size. And to me, it's kind of a, it almost looks like a Toro. Uh, like where a I'm used to, extra. It almost looks like a Robusto Extra, really. Yeah. And, uh, but a beautiful cigar. So we've got all four sizes in right now. And then uh, another cigar that uh, we've been out of for a while is the Aladino Corojo Reserva. Uh, this is not for the weak of heart. This, this cigar is no joke. Um, it's actually what uh, Aladino used to be Camacho mm -hmm. and uh, so Davidoff acquired the Camacho name and uh, But there was a cigar that was done back in the day called the diploma and the diploma really was the thing that that the cigar that really Turned the industry and got him thinking about more full-bodied cigars mm -hmm. instead of that Cuban mild Cigar so this cigar is no joke. Well this they went back and recreated the diploma and called the Corojo Reserva it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is available in the Robusto and the Toro. Those are both in stock. Yeah. So talk a little bit about some of the other cigars that we got here. You talked a little bit about the Connecticut Antonio. Yeah, so um, so what's, your, what's your reaction on that cigar so far? It burns great. It, no, this is like a razor sharp burn, which I'm actually really impressed by. Um, you know, smoking in Oya, I mean, the, especially the Antonio series, they're known to be a little bolder, for sure. Right. So... Their, their whole plan with the Antonio CT was to make a Connecticut to kind of like break the mold and making a Connecticut that, that could fit that Antonio name and carry that Antonio name. And it definitely has some good complexity to it. It has, it has some light pepper on the retro hail. It's, it's super creamy, um, but it's not as, as, as bold as I expected it to be. I mean, it's still yeah. a Connecticut. Right. Um, but a lot of what I was looking up online and reading was that all oh, this is you know, medium to full in strength and in body. I'm not really getting any of that. Maybe that's just my palate. But this is a, I'm having a cup of coffee right now, the Distretto coffee, the Nicaragua brand. Um, this is going great with that. Um, I'm not really a Connecticut guy. I don't really grab them. I love the Crux Epicure. Um, but this this is actually really good. This is something that I would definitely grab again. And I've never had the Corona Gorda size. Uh, and I think- that's That was surprising to me. Is, You've never, yeah. you said you had never had a Corona or a Corona no. Gordo. No, Ed. I'm a Toro. I, I usually always grab Toros. If I, no matter what I smoke, if I can find a Toro, I'll, I'll grab that. Now, now with the Brindille, what does that mean? What, what size is that? It's like a six by forty-six. Right? It's a six by forty-six, so it's it's a little bit longer. I mean, than it'd be Corona. longer than a Corona Gordo, um, but there are several Corona Gordos. Corona Gordo is going to be a slightly larger ring gauge and a little bit longer than a typical Corona. But for people that don't have a lot of time to smoke a cigar. Um, it's great. I, I'm a huge Lancero fan, so the ring gauge of this is just slightly larger than a Lancero, but it's shorter. So if you want that that emphasis of the wrapper, uh, and you want a high concentration of wrapper, that's that's a great size. But try the Crux, the, the Crux, the uh, the Patoro Series P Corona mm -hmm. are they're magic. Yeah. I mean they are they're absolutely incredible. So if you like Connecticut's and and you want something with a little bit of more complexity than, than your typical like Macanudo or your, your Monte Cristo. 
you know, think outside the box, grab one of these. Uh, this is actually, I'm really enjoying it. Um, next up, we got the Regis's came in. We got quite a few. The, for those of you that haven't had Regis, they're based in the United Kingdom. Um, these are great sticks. This is the regular black label. I'm gonna put this down. Uh, this is just a Robusto and a tube. It is the best-selling non-Cuban in the UK. Oh, yeah. it, it's, it is very Cuban-esque. The very black Cuban. label, they made a red, white, and blue series mm -hmm. that are for the US. Um, but in this case, the black label is the UK uh, version. And this is like their, their standard. Now, this is all Nicaraguan tobacco uh, made by the Placenti family, am I correct? Right. So I love, you know, I mean, Placenti is almost everything. Placencia Five family. generations of tobacco grows really good, high quality tobacco. But people come in and they go, oh, I love Cubans. What's the closest thing you have to a Cuban? This is the most Cuban-esque experience you can get in our humid world. No. Uh, and, and I would actually say, sorry to interrupt, but no. I would actually say, better than a current Cuban experience oh, because yeah. you'll get that Cuban flavor, mm -hmm. but the draw and the performance on these cigars are spectacular. And the consistency. And the, well, and the consistency. You know, when I went to Cuba, it was actually a year ago this week, I went to Cuba and my friend uh, Oliver is down there today. Um, if he's not in jail, yeah, Oliver. <laughs> um, but uh, the one thing that they were telling us is that the, so many of the Cubans are almost unsmokable because they're so tight. And uh, I was talking with, the, with some people within Habanos, and they were saying that worldwide it's globally accepted for anywhere from uh, two to five cigars within a box of 25 to be unsmokable. And I said, if you ever get into the United States, you guys got to change that attitude because guys don't buy 25 cigars and pay for 25 cigars to only have 20 of them work. <laughs> so in the U.S. that won't fly. But... Um, the performance on the cigar is spectacular. Yeah. And and there are two cigars that we were going to wait until the end of the month. Um, when Akil comes in, who is the owner of uh, who is the owner of Regis, which he will be coming in on March 28th to to uh, to introduce this new cigar. We've kind of let the we cracked the seals on this because I wanted to smoke it. I accidentally left the box out, and about <laughs> 20 minutes later, the first box was gone. Especially of the Kamanas, the, the oh. Torpedo, they were gone. We had to open up a new box yeah. yesterday. Yeah, we sold two two boxes yesterday. There's only 30 boxes of each in the United States. We're the only ones with this, but this is the new Orchid. The, for those of you that have had the Orchid, you know it was a cigar that was made for the second oldest tobacconist in the world, in the UK. He actually has to give permission on how many are released to the United States. Uh, we have all of them, and this is a, almost a Robusto, just a little bit smaller ring gauge than a Robusto, um, but the, this is the new Orchid, and this one is the Torpedo. Mm -hmm. the, per, the performance of that cigar, the flavor profile in that cigar, the citrus that comes off that, it is, it's a Cuban with citrus, which you don't, normally you get the, the earthiness, Earthy overwhelms, hay, grass, yeah. all that. But this just has this really beautiful uh, citrus or floral note to it. It's a little punchier with a little bit more pepper too. It than is. The regular Regis. It's about, it's about $15. Uh, members obviously will save 15% on that. And, um, uh, but it is, it's spectacular. It is absolutely spectacular. So, um, we restocked so we, on the God of Fire, too. Yes, and we also have uh, the God of Fires, which are uh, basically a cigar made for Prometheus, uh, which is a, actually a humidor and lighter company uh, out of California, but there it's it's basically Opus Tobacco. Uh, it's done by Don Carlos and and, uh, and by Carlito Fuente. Uh, it's it's an ability to get into a, an Opus-type product for that some kind of sub-$20 price point versus a... Uh, uh, $30 plus price point that you'll pay with an Opus. So those are just a few of the cigars that are in the shop today. And uh, there's another one that we'll talk about when we get to how slow can you smoke. Mm -hmm. What's everybody out there smoking today? Let's make this an interactive show. Uh, what kind of feedback and comments are we getting today, Adrian? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. Oh, come on. Is it, is it because, is it me? No. I mean, uh, no. no, there's a lot. I mean, this is, from an information standpoint, stellar. Oh, I gotta just tell you, you know, I've never gone live on my Instagram feed, so this is the first. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I don't even post on my Instagram. I mean, the only thing I posted, so my wife made me go on Instagram. Okay. She, you know, she's on Instagram. Yeah. She posts all of our, you know, son's photos and stuff like that. Um, I've just been doing it to post cigar photos for the last two years. Makes sense. You know? Very That's sure. it. So now here I am doing a live feed and a, you know. Well, good. So we're going to talk about um, a couple of things. One, uh, let's party. Let's party. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of you are looking for places to have a unique party. And one of the things that we've done is we've actually created 
uh, the ability to rent out Industrial Cigars uh, public lounge, and um, you can do it for different different days. You can do half the lounge, the full lounge, uh, get it to a point where we can even bring in food and, and all the other goodies. So if you're ever interested in doing something unique, a networking meeting, doing something cool, um, like any good business, we are for rent. So um, that is an option for you guys with the party. And uh, let's talk a little bit about an event that I'm really excited about, which is coming up on 311. It is having dinner with a doctor. Having dinner with a doctor. What kind of doctor do you use? He's actually a plastic surgeon mm. that decided that, you know, making a lot of money, making beautiful women look even more beautiful was boring. It's boring. So he decided that he was going to get back into the family business of cigars, uh -huh. you know, and they always say the quickest way to become uh, a millionaire in the cigar industry is start out as a multimillionaire. Of course. And uh, so we'll see how that works out for him. But uh, Dr. Pablo Richard, I call him Richard. It looks like Richard. He doesn't look like a Richard. I mean, he's Swiss, right? He's Swiss. He's so it's, it's Richard. Or Richard. No, it's Richard. No, it's Richard. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with the actor. He yeah. knows. If it was Ricard, I believe it would just there would be no H. Yeah, there's an H. I, yeah. I saw it. He so bought that. Sure. Yeah, he bought, bought a vowel. He yeah, bought a vowel. That's a consonant. I get you know numbers <laughs> fuck with me a lot, so I, I try not to. I try to stay away from that. But okay. um, so here's what we've got: Patoro, which is one of our best-selling lines in the store, uh, a Swiss company. Mm -hmm. It's owned by um, a gentleman named Patrick Martin. Which you can go into our YouTube page and watch our very first ICC oh. University. And it was with Patrick. What was interesting is when we first brought this line in, Patrick's passion for cigars and his attention to detail is is only matched maybe by Nelson Alfonso, mm -hmm. the owner of Atabay. And uh, so we actually captured an interview with myself and Patrick. But when the new Patoro cigars came in, we actually wouldn't let anybody buy them until they watched the video. Because I wanted them to see who they were buying a cigar from. That's cool. And we sold 126 boxes in three weeks, and people have been buying them wow. ever since, and it has been an incredible, incredible experience. But I'm smoking the Patoro Brazil, which was actually blended by Pablo. So Dr. Pablo Richard, um, he joined with Patrick. He wanted to get out of uh, plastic surgery. I don't know if he wanted to, more than he wanted to get into the cigar business. His uh, grandfather was actually... Uh, the chairman of the board of the holding company of Davidoff Ernst and had Schneider, the first right? right and he had the first uh, Davidoff lounge in Switzerland mm -hmm. so they have that connection with the with Davidoff and Patrick Martin was actually uh, in two years of work when he first got into the industry he only he worked for Davidoff and only answered to the board of directors mm -hmm. so they have that that history that heritage um, they started manufacturing cigars in the Dominican at a, at, a, at a level that is, it's, it's literally almost unmatched. Extremely high quality. Long story short, what we've been doing now for the last couple weeks and up until March 9th, for every, for every Patoro cigar that you purchase, you'll either get one, two, or three entries into a, a, a raffle, in a mm -hmm. sense. Six names will be picked. I went like this, but I meant six. And uh, six names will be picked, and Pablo will be taking those six members or six uh, winners to Chamberlain's and having a full steak dinner along with Patoro cigars, and you can smoke them while you eat your steak and have your drinks, and it's going to be a great intimate night to spend time with a guy that's just, the guy is just, he has so much knowledge. But what I love was his, his passion and desire to get into this business. Patrick knew that Pablo didn't need the money. And he didn't want somebody working for him that didn't need the money. Mm -hmm. So he said, I need to see your commitment to the cigar industry. So Pablo went to Nic or to the Dominican and actually went to work in the factory for two years, swept the floors, picked the tobacco, worked in the fermentation, worked in the sorting. He worked in all aspects, lived with them, ate with them, did everything with them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and after two years, then uh, Patrick brought him in and now he's part of this, and it just shows that whole company has so much passion, and it's and you taste it in their cigars. Yeah, I, honestly, the first um, Patoro that I had was the XO, 
I mean, talk about starting that is just yeah, it's just dumped right in the I mean, end. and it was like creamy. I mean, it was Google does that like nine and twelve year old tobacco yeah. in there because their tobacco is just a minimum of three years old. Oh, way and just beyond a regular that. Then. Right, regular cigars, right. minimum of three years, so three right. and twelve. But that was a fantastic cigar. And, and when I go in a humor, I don't necessarily go for the Dominican cigars. But these cigars are packed with flavor, and I've learned so much just from smoking you know, so more Dominicans much. here. But and then I learned that they only use the seco and mijero leaves in right. the blends because it has the more robust flavors. It, it provides the most complexity. But I think so. This, and and, and I'll, there yeah. there are three levels on the plant: seco, viso, lajero. The higher you get up in the plant, the more nutrients that remain in the plant. The thicker that leaf is, the more flavor that there is. It's also the most expensive. So, but. To his point, they're really not using any of the lower leaves. So everything you're getting is not just blah filler to fill a cigar. You're getting every every tobacco leaf in a Patoro has a purpose. Yeah. And it's like a great chef that's going to, every spice has a reason. Best ingredients. Yes. Right? Best and and that's that's for sure. So this so this will be coming up. The, the dinner will actually be on the 11th. Um, they have a private little dining area back in their uh, cigar area. We'll have a great steak, we'll have a, a great drinks, and get a chance to have this great meal uh, with the doctor and uh, with, with uh, uh, Dr. Pablo. So he'll also be here at the store, and uh, we'll be doing some events and tied to that. So come in, get a Patoro. If you haven't had it yet, I'm sorry you're missing it. you got to come in here and give it a shot. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, how slow do you smoke? Oh, God. So, you're, so would you call yourself a fast smoker? How about you guys out there? Are you consider yourself a fast smoker or a slow smoker? I, I'm, fast. I'm definitely a slow smoker. Are you fast? Sure. I mean, I was, I was smoking a Lancero last night. It was the Alma de Fuego um, uh, Flamna, the Lancero one. And uh, Elliot, one of our members, was just giving me so much crap because I was smoking it forever. I mean, it's not, it's not a long smoke. But he, like, he's the fastest smoker no, I've he's ever just, seen. And, you know, I take my time. I like to taste everything. I'm also working, you know, so it all depends on the environment I'm in. But I, I would say I'm a so, slow smoker. I'm not like a three-hour smoker. Right. But. Well, what's crazy is, and, and if you give anybody enough liquor and enough uh, cigars and let them ponder, they will come up with a great idea. And in this case, <laughs> um, there was a, an idea concocted with a group of guys that, you know, like anything, uh, you could you could tear up your wrapper from your cigar and go. I bet you I can make it into the basket, you know, 30 feet away. So they thought, well, let's see how slow we can smoke a cigar. And um, one of our great friends, Darren Trophy from Principal Cigars, is a multi-time world champion and world record holder in the CSWC, which is the Cigar Smoking World Championship, and it is a slow smoking competition that the finals are actually in Croatia. Uh, my wife actually won last year, the Queen Bee, on the third cigar she's ever smoked, won um, the Texas qualifier, and then she ended up going to New Jersey to qualify to try to get to Croatia to represent the United States. This year, last year Macanudo was a sponsor, this year Rocky Patel is a sponsor, and um, one of the things is you'd like to practice and we've never had the chance to practice because the competition cigar was always different. Mm -hmm. So now what they're doing is we can actually get the competition cigar. So what I'm going to do is this is a this is a test for y'all out there. Um, this is a normal robusto, so everybody knows what a normal robusto looks like. So this is what the slow smoking competition cigar looks like in size. I'm showing this to the multiple cameras. So you'll see it's not a really big cigar. And uh, it's about a, would you call that, about a four and a half by 44, yeah. maybe? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the size of your cigar. So now you'll look at the label. The base of that label has a line on it. Actually, the competition one has a, a heat sensing label. But this much cigar right here, that's it. This is this little bit of cigar. How long would that take you to smoke? This little cigar. How long? I went an hour and 48 minutes. My wife won at two hours to smoke the last person to get to the label. It can never be touched up. You can't blow out. You can't um, relight it. You get one shot. You can't ash it for 30 minutes. And during that competition, you just have to keep that cigar lit and smoke has to be able to be blown out. 
Um, you can't talk for the first 10 minutes, right? You can't talk for the first 10 minutes, which is crazy here, because no one here can shut up. Everyone's like, going to fail. Obviously. Listen okay, to these guys no, telling stories about no their restroom. vacation. No restroom break. You can't do anything, right? So. Wear a diaper. The record is now three hours and 54 minutes to smoke to this label. It's absolutely, these guys have the ability to figure out how to smoke the inside tobacco without it actually lighting the outside of the wrapper to burn the label, which then shuts it off. It's incredible. But in May, we are gonna have an official qualifier here at Industrial Cigars. We've had like five, one official for the qualifier, um, but now you can actually come in and get the cigar and practice with it. They're in a box of 10, and of course one box is gonna go home to my wife so she can begin her process of cheating again to win. <laughs> So, um, anyway, so Slow Smoke is coming to town. There are going to be Slow Smokes all over. Um, I saw my friends up in Omaha are going to have one at their shop. There are going to be multiple ones. Basically, everywhere that Rocky is selling uh, product, they're going to be doing Slow Smokes at it. Um, for most of these shops, it's going to be a new concept that a lot of guys are just going to blow off and say, this is stupid. But for us, this will be our sixth one. It is, everyone has gotten bigger. I think that when we do this next one, we will actually fill both the public and private lounge with, lounge with uh, competitors. A normal good event for them is 15 to 20. Um, we, we shut down tickets at 30. I think we could do 70 or 80 people in here nice. doing the slow. Everybody that's done it cannot wait for it to come back again. So it's a lot of fun. We're really excited about that. Uh, we'll talk about a couple other uh, events that are going on. Again, folks, we are corona-free, so make sure that you come in. Uh, you know, you don't even need to wear the mask anymore. So There's we're, hand sanitizer everywhere. You're good. There, it, it's all good. There's an interesting uh, question that's been uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh huh. What's the difference between cigarettes and cigars? Oh, other than, other than inhaling. Yeah. Well, big difference. Oh, yeah. just as far as the tobacco is concerned. Well, I mean, it's an open question, right? You ask. Five different people, you can probably get five different answers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the technical answer is, is the tobacco that's typically used is grown in the States. Um, the tobacco, where it's grown, the soil has a tendency to make an oilier, heavier cigar, or an oilier, heavier tobacco. It is um, literally shredded um, because it, the tobacco itself really wouldn't fit um, a cigar as, a, as an ingredient in a cigar. Um, so you see it all through the south and all the growing areas down through the south. Obviously, Connecticut and Pennsylvania has its own growing um, uh, tobacco that's grown, but a lot of their stuff is grown primarily for wrappers for cigars, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and they take that and ship that to the Dominican or to Nicaragua. But the tobacco that's grown in the States for cigarettes is, you know, I guess they would, it's the same, they're not going to use ditch weed when, in the dispensaries in Colorado, right? They're going to probably find the good stuff. Yeah. Um, so they take that and they shred it, but they add a lot of chemicals. They add a lot of preservatives. They add a lot of things sugars to it. They'll add sugars. Yeah. They'll add all kinds of stuff. Plus, you hear about some of the other stuff that they put in it to, that, that would kill a rat. But um, And then, obviously, it, you're inhaling it to, to get it into your bloodstream. Handmade premium cigars are is probably the most organic thing that you can get. The, the tobacco is fermented. It's, it's aged, it's dried, it's fermented, um, and then at that point it's sorted and it's rolled into the cigar. And unless you get something that's like an acid or whatever that's gonna have a sweet uh, infusion, mm -hmm. the tobacco's infused with something, or you'll see some of these guys that are literally dunking cigars in cognac and stuff um, that, that'll add flavor to the cigar. But really, in the end, the quality of the tobacco, and in most cases, the regions where the tobacco is grown um, is, is completely different. And so the, the bonus of that fermentation process that you mentioned is, is you know, tobacco is an, is an organic product, so there's organic compounds in there. So that fermentation process helps eliminate all the ammonia, all the, right. you know, all, all those kind of like negative organic compounds that are, that get you the harsh flavor and that, that bitterness and, and just things that are not healthy for you, that stuff gets eliminated from the leaf. So you're just getting the natural oils of the tobacco, the flavor from the leaf, um, obviously you don't inhale, and you're not smoking paper. I mean, right. You have to remember, you're smoking paper, 
in addition to that that tobacco. And I was talking with Andrew about this just the other day, and he was talking about something about the Churchill study, right? Where they they compared seven Churchill sized cigars a day versus versus seven cigarettes, and when they weighed the the mass of a cigarette, it was like one percent of it was actual tobacco, because you had all these other chemical right. compounds, and filters, you had paper, and all that stuff, filter and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they measured a cigar, and it was like ninety nine percent was long leaf tobacco and then the other one percent was like oil and water or right oil and air so, you know, so big difference big so, difference product but so okay. every week uh, every week on the show we have a tip of the day but and today's tip of the day was real simple don't smoke cigarettes mm -hmm. uh we in fact if you smoke cigarettes uh, we don't actually allow cigarette smoking in our shop yeah. so uh, let me just that conversation and say that cigar smoking is healthy yeah Organic, I heard organic. It organic. is. Natural. It actually triggers endorphins in your brain that causes you to relax. You and I actually have a health insurance provider, which is one of the major, I'm sorry, not health, but life insurance providers, that because I smoke cigars, my insurance rate went down oh, because unless I have, it, because the, the, uh, uh, the CDC has set, not CDC, the FDA did a, did a report after evaluating cigars that if you smoke at least one cigar per day, that the chance of getting cancer is nil. So if you're an insurance company, if if this lowers your blood pressure and lowers your and lowers your stress level, and the chance of getting cancer is nil, there's actually a benefit to them if you do. So um, so that's a for what it's worth uh, if you're out shopping for insurance. But um, so we're going to go ahead and recap some of the events that are going on, and we'll let you guys get together with your Saturday. So it's a beautiful day here, but as you can see, we are packed already. Um, so we have the Patoro dinner coming on the 11th. Cigar 101 at Little Elm Craft House. So last time Little Elm Craft House came here and they did a um, kind of a craft beer 101 cigar pairing <clears throat> with our cigar nuts, uh, pairing that with their beers. And now Brandon's going to go over there and talk about cigars to their beer nuts so it should be a fun thing and we we uh, actually went over to uh little Elm craft house this this last week and and uh, for their mardi gras event cars and cigars again this one should be uh, unless unless it rains another big one uh we're really excited about that march 13th mark your calendar go online make sure you reserve a ticket for um the national release of the Casa Turin 1880s there's four new blends that are coming out edgar hoya will be in the house he is creating a special humidor that will be loaded with cigars that he's going to do personal hand hand done art on, and uh, also a special ten pack that will be created that will have two each of all the cigars plus two of the 1880s, so the original 1880. So that will be here. Um, we have uh, Frisco Arts, the uh, Smart Men. Get it, Smart Art. Smart Men uh, of Frisco Arts is going to be coming in on the 19th to do uh, a Cigar 101, kind of a private little deal. Not really private, but you can get tickets for that. I'm really excited about the March 28th event for to really launch the cigar that I probably should have held until the 28th of March, but I couldn't uh, because it's too damn good. Yeah. So um, with that, what did we miss? No, I think we, cut, we covered a lot of stuff. Oh, the chocolates. Oh, chocolates. yeah. So from Distretto Coffee Roasters. Oh, you guys know Distretto. Yeah. Distretto is the official coffee of Saturday at the shop. Yeah. And uh, we love those guys. Their coffee. Today we're drinking Nicaraguan coffee. Nicaraguan blend. And, it's, and it is beautiful. And I'm pairing you with a Nicaraguan cigar, so it goes perfectly together. But uh, no, we got dark chocolate covered uh, coffee beans, organic fair trade from Chiapas, Mexico. Um, these are actually really, really good. Um, I honestly am not a fan of chocolate covered coffee beans because there's mostly coffee bean and not enough chocolate. This is actually mostly chocolate and it was it's good. really good. Yeah, It's just That's a little like, pack of dynamite yeah, right there. And it's even, you know, like a little coffee bean. But yeah, no, this is really good. And if, and if sleep is something you really don't think you need, eat some of those about 10 o'clock at night and see where no, that gets you. And you know you. what? This is healthy chocolate. It's dark chocolate. There's, there's antioxidants, flavonoids. So let's, let's go with good that. For you. Let's go with that. Cigars, Put it on a pizza. Perfect. Yeah. Healthy, organic. So, uh, and then one last thing, and I, I this was just got lost in the, uh, the hustle and bustle, but we have uh, an inaugural event. A couple of our members, uh, we're big supporters of the military here. And uh, a couple of our members are very involved with the VFW. Um, I love the name of this. It's a it's a, actually a, mo a motorcycle ride. That's the Mudder Duckin 
fun run. VFW fun run. So say that ten say, times fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we would actually bleep ourselves, which is hard to believe. But it's a fun run that's on April 18th, and there are going to be I think it's 15 different VFWs in the area are going to do a massive motorcycle ride. They're going to do a whole thing and end up here at Industrial Cigars. Our friends over at Snookerd uh, is going to provide provide some uh, food and drinks. This place will be filled with two or three hundred motorcycles. So uh, if you're with the VFW, please look it up. It's on our website. It's on um, uh, the uh, Veterans for Foreign Wars, VFW, Frisco, Texas. Make sure that you check it out. This is going to be a fun day, and it's a way to help support our vets uh, with the VFW. Come in and have some Distretto coffee. Come in and meet Tony. The guy was in a hemorrhoid commercial. Oh, and, he was uh, not in a hemorrhoid commercial. <laughs> and, a uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a You're public service man. announcement. I, You're the Trojan man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so come in, try some of the new cigars. We will do some specials today. In fact, I'm just going to announce one right now for all of you guys that, that stuck around. On all La Polina and all Camacho, 25% off today for all of them. Today only. Today only because they won't be around. But if you're a Camacho fan, I've got Goldie's. I've got uh, Family Series, which is extremely good. Mm -hmm. Got some of the flavored barrel-aged stuff. And uh, so the, you got the Camachos uh, and La Polina. There's still some of the La Polina black labels and some of those stuff if you like a fuller cigar. Uh, uh, come on in. Uh, now, the Camacho, I said Goldie. The Goldie is a La Polina. So if I got that backwards, it's because you I'm You know what I think is really interesting if I can just add to the La Polina thing? Uh, they're not eligible for the special. But we have pre-embargo original La Polinas in our country. Yes. I mean, that, I appreciate the cool. disclaimer there because those sons of bitches are yeah. up there. No, but I mean, if you want a, a taste of history, that's cool. When I came yeah. in here and I saw that, first of all, all the oldest cigar we have is 1917. But, I mean, to, to sit there and have a modern La Polina with an original Cuban La Polina that was nine cents back in the day, you get three for a quarter at that time. Yeah. Um, that, that's an experience that's definitely worth it. We're not three for a cents. Three, four, yeah, no. <laughs> after, after day's deal. Yeah, yeah that's true. about that. So uh, so come in, meet Tony, see the guys. We're having nothing but fun around here. We're going to watch a bunch of guys run fast on the combines. Uh, and I think there's a little XFL that's going to be going on today. So come on in. You know, the only thing that a nice weather day can get you is a list of shit that your wife wants you to do. So come on in, <laughs> have some fun. Say that you're at Home Depot and Costco. Um, and don't go to Costco anyway because there's a panic and everybody bought all the water. On, on the yeah. Really? They, they, yeah, they ran out of water at Costco yesterday because <laughs> Corona. And the nice thing is, because we're Corona free, they really should be down here. We got bottled water. We got water. We got Ozarka. You know, we, we, we got, got it. it. We got it. So, Topo Chico. So, hey, thank you guys. You have a lot of places that you can go shop. You have a lot of places you can go spend your Saturday morning. But you decided to spend it here with us today. We appreciate that. Tony, welcome aboard. Nice you do you a, you're much better than Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Brandon, just take your time getting back. I don't Whatever. Think we had any squirrel moments, did we? Didn't. No, we I stayed on track. Yeah. Why? Good job. Good job. Good job. I'm, Good job. I'm, I'm yeah. feeling. I'm. I'm gonna go sit by myself for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, guys.